everybody. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good day. I mean, it's another day that God has allowed you to wake up and uh, he's asking you to do something for him. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is being a servant, being a servant of God. And specifically, the, the title of the lesson is called Servitude. And so a true Christian is a servant. I mean, any definition of a Christian should include the word servant. And as Christians, we should desire to be a servant to others, and not only to God, but to others as well. You know, in Romans 6, 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See, every child of God is to understand the principle of servitude. And we should all know that servitude in the scriptures was equivalent to slavery. In other words, when we give ourselves to Christ, he owns us. You know, he tells us that in 1 Corinthians 6, 20. says, you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. But see, unlike the slavery that's occurred in times past in different places, see, we choose whom we're going to serve. I mean, so we are not forced to submit to God. We're not forced to do it. He doesn't force us into servitude. No, he, he just offers us. And it is best if we willingly submit to him. And we know that. Our spiritual service of worship is that which proves in us the will of God. You know, as he said there in Romans 12, verse 2, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. We demonstrate that by the transforming or the renewing of our minds. And so, we know, as Christians, we are to perform duties for God. That's what he requires. He expects us to do things. He has works planned for us, Ephesians 2, 10. And, and so, we have obligations and responsibilities to God. I mean, we have to do the work we're supposed to do. And we have no problem in doing most of them. And this is in consideration of what God has done for us. Let's face it, he knew that sinners would not be acceptable to him because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. And our sins, also known as our iniquities, have separated us from God, you know, Isaiah 59, 2. And so without something in the form of grace and redemption and propitiation, we could never have a relationship with God. We could not call him our Father, which is in heaven. But while we were yet sinners, God sent his son that we may have eternal life. You know, John 3, 16, God's loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. In Romans 5, 8, he talks about while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so God has made the provisions. He's, he's made it possible that we can come into a relationship with him. But it, once again, it is our choice to do so. So our willingness to submit to God by obeying his commandments is what brings about our salvation. I mean, by learning obedience, Christ became the source of eternal salvation. Hebrews 5 and verse 9. And in that Jesus came to do the will of God, he showed himself to be an example to all of his followers. And Jesus came and said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. All right, so... Colossians 3, 24 says, Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Yes, when we serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and then we have that reward of inheritance available to us. But if we stop serving him, that reward is taken away. Now, we consider serving God, we consider serving Jesus, but what about the Holy Spirit? We normally do not consider that uh, as one to be served. But in effect, we really do. I mean, when we do what, when we do so, when we take his work and apply it to our lives, the work of the Holy Spirit is revealing God's message to mankind. And the primary work that he did was giving us the Bible. So when we take the Bible and apply it to our lives, we're basically giving honor to the Holy Spirit and recognizing what he's done for us. So when we study and meditate upon the word of God, we realize the Holy Spirit gave this to us 
as he was directed by God and Jesus and Christ. So when we allow his work to permeate and infiltrate our very being, then we are in a sense becoming his servant. So in essence, we serve God, we serve Christ, we serve the Holy Spirit, deity, I mean, the Godhead. We do uh, honor those. Now, many of those in the church feel confident that they serve deity, as we just mentioned above. And, and many feel that upon doing their duty to deity, then deity will reward them. I mean, you serve God, he'll reward you. And that's what most people consider. And for the majority of Christians, this is all the service they ever offer. See, there's, there's other things which deserve our service. And I would suggest that we rethink our application of service being in an upward direction only and apply the word to the original in, intent of being outward as well. Outward, outreach, whichever word you want to use there. So what are we talking about? Well, since I said outward, that obviously excludes me. <clears throat> I'm not supposed to serve myself. You know, self-serving, that's another word for selfishness. And selfishness is always wrong. There's no doubt about that. So it excludes me being serviced. You know, some people act and behave as if, I mean, they're, they're doing us a favor by showing up and they want to be served. And, and some, some people act that way. But that's not our purpose of coming together. And so... We must deny ourselves and take up our cross daily in order to, to live for him, in order to follow him. And we are meant to serve, not to be served. And so we are to serve each other. You know, in Romans 6 and verse 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. So we should not be serving sin or giving in to sin. And Jesus also said that serving two masters was impossible. And yet so many try and do that. Many people in the church, they, they can't give up the world, but yet they know they have to be a servant of Christ. So really, they, they, they have a big problem in their, in their thinking. And you just have to think that they're pretty miserable about it also. See, if we serve Christ, then we no longer serve sin. If, however, we continue to sin, we are not serving Christ. And so, like, like he said, it's impossible to serve Christ and continue in sin. I mean, so we, we know that. And really, it's our actions will tell Christ if we are serving him or sin. I mean, if, if we're obedient to God, he will know by, the, by our actions. You know, in Titus 1.16 says, Many profess to know God, but their deeds deny him. And Jesus said there's many going to be claimed to be followers of God, but that's not going to work either. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. And there's a lot of will that God has expressed that we should be doing. All right, so we think about that. You know, in Galatians 1.10, Paul wrote, for, I do, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, anybody who tries to be pleasing to people, I mean, they're, they're sometimes going to have to compromise the truth, and they're not serving Christ anymore. They're just serving themselves. They're serving their own situation and making people feel good about themselves. You know, Jesus is to be the Lord of our life. We know that. And we submit to him, and we humble ourselves before him. And if we expect him to save us, we know that it is only on his terms. A lot of people fail to realize that. Some people decide their own terms, say, well, God's going to take it anyway. And they expect God to take their, their own terms rather than looking at God's terms and following them. So by being our Savior, Jesus becomes our God, our Lord, our master, our leader, our king, our authority, and our guide. And maybe we can throw in the word example. Jesus is our perfect example. 
you know, 1 Peter 2 and verse 22. And, and so, if we do not honor Jesus by our obedience, then we are forsaking him. You know, Jesus said, you're either with me or against me. You're either planning with me or you're pu pulling up. And there is no neutral territory in this. So if you do not honor Jesus by obedience, then you are forsaking him. And so when anything is given preference over Jesus, then we cannot be his servants. I mean, so if we play politics and do things to be seen by men, we cannot be the servants of Christ. You know, in Matthew 4.10 then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You know, Jesus was teaching that Satan could not offer an acceptable substitute for God. And Jesus, quoting from Scripture, answers Satan, who was asking Jesus to bow down before him. There is only one God who is worthy of honor and glory, and our worship, and our servitude. See, in Galatians 5.13, it reads, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. We're supposed to serve each other as Christians. If we have a Christian family, if we're members of a, a local congregation, we're supposed to serve each other. Now, some people act like they expect to be served. And they need a portion of this and a portion of that, but they don't come for the purpose of serving others. That's what we're here for. That's why we're supposed to exist. See, the New Testament is literally filled with passages detailing our duty to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, we have the passages that describe us of being in the same body. You know, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Having the same head, Jesus is that head mentioned in those passages, and we hold to the same faith. I mean, we're supposed to do that, 1 Corinthians 1.10, and being of the same mind and having the same faith, and we honor the same God and Lord. And so our stewardship that God gives us is to take care of each other. See, some people don't look at it that way. Paul said that his stewardship that God commissioned him to do, I mean, he did willingly. And we also, as Christians, have a stewardship. A stewardship is one who has been entrusted to do something for the master. And we, we sometimes hear in some of the parables about the stewards of God and those who had a stewardship. And, and so our job is to take care of each other and help each other. Our job as Christians is to help each other get to heaven. Help as many people get to heaven as possible. How does that happen? Well, it happens through evangelism and edification. That's how it works. And so, are we participating in that? Are we doing things along that line? All right, having said that, let us now concentrate on those who need the most service. But actually, they actually receive the least. See, these people are the lost. You know, the greatest service to any person would be to show them the light of the gospel and bring them to obedience to God, bring them to repentance. And God has appeared to all mankind to show them the Christ. The grace of God has appeared unto all men, Titus 2 and verse 11 and 12. And so God is not willing that any should perish, you know, 2 Peter 3, 9. And so he has provided the means. God has given us everything we need, 2 Peter uh, 1 and verse 3. Everything we need concerning salvation and, and life, he's made known to us. He's made known to us life and immortality through the gospel, through the church. And, and so the, the church is to promote the gospel, which teaches about salvation and eternal life. So... Because of that, God sent his son to light the way for us and show us the door and the path of the right way, which leads to life. And if God made provision for the greatest need that mankind would ever have, then it should be the one service that we should offer to mankind with God's blessings. And you would think so. That would be the one thing God wants us to do is share the message of God. 
And yes, we're talking about personal evangelism. Now, for a lot of people in the church, evangelism is not the problem with many. The problem is the personal part. Oh, I have to get involved with this? I mean, many are just tickled pink their preacher preaches the truth on all Bible subjects. And many feel very good that they support the work of the local church by their contributions. And many delight in the fact that their churches sponsor or support evangelists in foreign works. Oh yeah, they're great and they contribute to that and that's good. But do they do it themselves? No, they don't do it themselves. They, I mean, that's the preacher's job. I mean, that, that's basically how they seem to behave and act. So, these people will have no problem telling you how great it is to be a servant of God. And the problem is that many are not servants of God, but they're of Satan. And how can I say that? How do we know? Well, Jesus said very plain and simple, if you love me, keep my commandments. So when Jesus said, go teach, I mean, that was one of his commandments. So if we're to try to service or serve God, then we are, I mean, we're neglecting the needs of those who need God the most. If that's all we try and do is please God, that's it. See, Jesus said to go teach, preach, baptize, and teach the lost. Jesus did not send us to the saved, but to the lost. And Jesus himself came to seek and save that which was lost. And that's what he said in his ministry. And if we do not serve the lost by teaching them the error of their way, then we are not obedient to Jesus Christ. See, we know that's the right thing to do, don't we? It's the right thing to do is teach people about the Christ. And you just remember James 4, 17. He that knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. So if we do not serve the lost by teaching them the error of their way, then we're not obedient to Jesus. And if we're not obedient to Jesus Christ, what else is left? See, there's only one other choice. That means you serve Satan. Now, whether you intend to or not, you're act many people are actually a servant of Satan, even though they claim to be servants of Christ. And they are, that, that exactly. So, we serve God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We serve deity, yes. We're supposed to serve each other. And we're supposed to serve the lost. And so, failure to serve in any one of these areas will leave us unfit for the Master's kingdom. So, think about this. Are you ready to be a servant? So... That's our lesson for today. Uh, consider these thoughts, and Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.